fucking what? What, what, what? What the hell is this? Harumph, 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 harumph. I didn't get a harumph out of that guy. Give the governor harumph. Harumph. You watch your ass. I see you shiver with anticipation. Let the show begin. Hey everybody, this is David Heretic coming at you with another edition of Reactions, Reviews, and Rants. And tonight! Tonight! Let's see what we got here. Alright, we are coming into a new band here, making their debut on the channel. We have the band called Falling in Reverse. How about that? Yes, indeed. This comes as a request from Chris Throughglass. Major Rad, Caleb, James Germano, the David Rob, yeah, the David Rob. Let's let's make sure we get clear on that. It's the David Rob. Uh, Deacon Durstler, Andrew Gans, and Trey X Cooper. They all want to see me react to this song from Falling in Reverse called Popular Monsters. Now, <laughs> I've heard of Falling in Reverse. I've heard of this band. I know of this band's existence. To the best of my knowledge, I've never heard anything from them, though. Now, look, it is it is entirely possible that I have heard something from them, and I just don't know it. So, as always, I'm going to listen to the song, and if at any point I go, oh, wait, I recognize this. I know what song this is. I'll let you know. That's the truth. You know me. I'm going to be honest with you guys. Let me see, this was posted by Epitaph Records, and the video has 52 million views. It'll get you there. Other than that, there's really nothing else left to say. Link to the original video will be down below in the description for your viewing pleasure at your leisure. Let's get started. What do you say? Are you ready? Are you ready? Because here we go. All right, here we go. Falling in reverse. Popular monster. Cool. All right, let's do this. All right, boy, let's do this. I'm not sure if I should say this, fuck, I'll say it anyway Everybody tries to tell me that I'm going through a phase I don't know if it's a phase, I just wanna feel okay yeah. I battle with depression, but the question still remains Is this post-traumatic stressing, or am I suppressing rage? And my doctor tries to tell me that I'm going through a phase Yeah, it's not a fucking phase, I just wanna feel okay Okay, yeah, I struggle with this bullshit every day And it's probably cause my demons simultaneously rage It obliterates me Pause really quick. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. At first I was like, is this a rock band or is this a hip hop artist? I'm not sure. <laughs> I wasn't hearing too much melody in the vocals. It was all spoken word. Um, it looks like it's kicking into a rock feel here. Let me back up about 10 seconds. It looks like we're going to kick into a rock feel here. Okay, good. <laughs> I feel a little more at ease now. Cause I Look, I know nothing about the hip hop world. Like nothing. Like if you're asking me to give insight into like a hip hop song or something like that, you're asking the wrong guy. I, I know nothing about it. I know, no, I know less than nothing about it. So I was, I'm not going to lie. I was getting a little worried, but uh, no, it looks like we're doing it. We're going to do okay. A um, lot of things I'm liking. A couple things I'm not wild about, but uh, overall so far, not bad. Not bad. Let's, uh, let's see where they go. Now that they're going to kick into the actual rock field. Let's, let's see where this goes. And it's probably cause my demons simultaneously rage It obliterates me The sins don't correct me I All 
think I'm going nowhere like a rat trapped in a maze Every wall that I knock down is just a wall that I replace I'm in a race against myself, I try to keep a steady pace How the fuck will I escape if I never close my case? Oh my god, I keep on stressing every second that I waste Is another second sooner to a blessing I won't take But my therapist will tell me that I'm going through a stage Yeah, it's not a fucking stage, I just wanna feel okay Okay, motherfucker, now you got my attention I need to change a couple things cause something is missing I get closer to the grave. I am yeah, okay. I'm I'm digging the feel. I'm digging the aggressive feel. Um It's done a very sub, like on the verses, it's done in a very subdued way. And I, I like how the verses build. They build and they build and they build in all in every respect. They build from an instrumental standpoint. They build in vocal delivery. They build in uh, what's the word in the phrasing. It builds. I mean, everything's building, and it builds all the way up to the apex, which is the chorus. It seems like. I mean, it happened in the first one. It feels like we're about to go into a second chorus here, and it's doing the same thing. It's building and building and building. I like that. That's really good. It, it's smart songwriting. Um, a lot of songs they'll just they'll build all the way throughout the entire song. This one is builds, hits the apex, drops back down, rebuilds, hits the apex. I wonder if it's going to do like that through the entire song. Not sure. <laughs> Only one way to find out. All right, it's back in about ten seconds. Let's keep going here. I get closer to the grave I am I like how we kicked into that double time feel right here. That's nice. That's really nice. Very, again, smart songwriting. It's showing that they're able to take the same feel this, without changing tempo, the same feel, but we're able to double time it now. So it changes the feel, not the tempo, just the feel. And it adds another layer of, well, to some extent, it adds another layer of complexity. But more importantly than that, it adds another layer of like, intensity so like you know we're, we've been sitting here kicking along at you know growing and growing and growing and we get to this apex and now we've taken that apex and we've taken it to another level by kicking in a double time feel like that very smart i also love how the tone of the guitar never changed they, they don't they don't bring it down when the double time feel hits everything stays up everything stays up in volume and intensity switching into that double time feel they don't bring it down a lot of bands will do that. You know, they'll go to a double time feel and everybody, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll change the feel of the song, but everybody will come down. Not in this case. It's staying up. <sighs> Again, there are things I, I'm really digging about this, and there are a couple of things I'm not that wild about. Um, I'll go into all of that at the end, but right now, let's let's keep going here. Let's, I want to hear them kick into that double time feel again. <laughs>
Yeah. Yeah. I mean, a lot of things I liked, a couple things I'm not that wild about, uh, but overall, overall, that's, that's a really good song. I, I dug that. That was good stuff right there. Well, there you go, folks. That was Falling in Reverse with Popular Monster. This was a request from Chris Through Glass, Major Rad, Caleb, James Germano, The David Rob, The, The David Rob, uh, Deacon Dursler, Andrew Gans, and Trey X Cooper. All right. On a scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to give that a 7.5. Yep, 7.5. I feel great with that score. Let me tell you why. Why? There were a lot of things about this I liked, okay? A couple of things I wasn't wild about. Um, we're going to start with the things I liked first. Okay, so first and foremost, songwriting. I, I can't say enough how smart the songwriting was here from a structure standpoint you know how the how the song was able to grow constantly regrow so you, know, you started out and i wouldn't say soft but you started out subdued and it grew the feeling of anticipation it grew it grew it grew the intensity grew and grew to an apex where the chorus kicked in as soon as the chorus was over shoom dropped right back down to that subdued feel not soft just subdued and it grew again. And it grew into it. What is interesting on the second one, it grew into a pre chorus, which it didn't have on the first one. It, there was no pre chorus in the first round. It grew into this pre chorus, then kicked into the chorus, then we kicked into this double time feel, taking it to the next level. I mean, really intelligent songwriting, knowing how to play on feel and emotion within a song. And, how to elicit emotion out of a out of a listener? Uh, not gonna lie, I I, I I was bobbing, I was I was head banging. I wouldn't really say head banging. I wasn't full blown head banging, but I was I was bobbing I was bobbing along to it. Um, I felt an adrenaline surge. You know, I felt the adrenaline grow. So yeah, I mean they did a really good job with that. Tonally, uh, great guitar tone, very thick, very heavy. Um, couldn't really hear the bass at all, unfortunately. You know, being a bass player, I'm always I'm always looking to hear the bass. Couldn't really hear it. Uh, nice mixing on the drums, though. The drums were very well mixed. I, I like how uh, nothing was overbearing. The snare, of course, the snare was a little bit louder than everything else in the kit. That's typical. If you listen to any, pretty much any song ever recorded, you're gonna hear two things stand out. You're gonna hear the snare stand out, or you're gonna hear the kick stand out. One of those two. Now, do I have a preference between the two? Being a bass player, I, I lean more toward the kick drum because that's what I lock into as a bass player. Um, when I'm playing bass with, with a band, whether it be in a recording session or I'm subbing with a band and we're playing live or whatever the situation might be, I always lock in to the, to the drummer's kick drum. That's what I do my best to lock into. The hi-hat to some extent as well, uh, depending on how steady the hi-hat is, but the kick drum is what I really listen for. So, I have a preference, yes, to the kick, but, but, that does not mean I don't appreciate good snare work. Good snare work is always good as well. Vocally, uh... <sighs> he has great power, great projection, I like his tone. I, I do like the tone he gets when he sings. The spoken word, not that wild about. Uh, it sounds it sounded a little thin when it was doing the spoken word, but when he would kick in and actually go into you know the melodies and stuff, it sounded a lot better. It sounded a lot better. Um, I enjoyed those parts. The spoken word parts, eh, it, it was good for the purpose of growing. It was good for the purpose of dynamic, but I could have done without it, personally, okay? Uh, the pacing of the song was fantastic. I mean, the song never dragged. The song, like I said, it kept evolving, it kept growing, and I loved that. Like I said, I loved pretty much everything about the song. There were a couple of things I wasn't wild about. A lot of processing, like... And now people are wondering, what do you mean by processing? A lot of 
filler, a lot of sampling, a lot of um, using filter for the purpose of effect. And listen, I got no problem with people using filters for effects, like putting effects on vocals and stuff like that. I got no problem with it as long as there's a reason behind it, as long as there's a purpose. Like in the song, if, the, if, the, if there's a vocal line that's using the, contest, uh, the context of speaking to somebody on the phone and they decide in post-production to put a telephone filter uh, through the vocal line or put the vocal line through a telephone filter to give it that effect, that makes perfect sense. I got absolutely no problem with that. Do that all day long. What I don't like is when people add effect on for the purpose of strictly adding effect for absolutely no reason whatsoever. And I feel like there was a lot of filler in this song. Now, did that make the song bad? Absolutely not. Not in any way, shape, or form. But I do feel like the processing was slightly overdone. I think it could have done without some of it. And now, some of it was good. Some of it was done in good taste. Some of it was also like, made me scratch my head going, why? What, what, what did that accomplish? So, you know, am I being hypercritical of it? Possibly. A lot of people will look at me and say, well, you're just being too harsh. You're looking for something to complain about. I'm not looking for something to complain about. I'm being honest. If I, if, I mean, I know a lot of reactors out there aren't. I know a lot of reactors are going to sit there and go, oh, I loved everything about this. What was the single thing I didn't like? Guys, I'm not going to sit here and insult your intelligence, okay? I'm going to be honest with you. If I don't like something, I'm going to say I don't like it. And I really was not a big fan of the over-processed stuff. But, having said that, the rest of the song, I thoroughly enjoyed. So, it was a really good song. That is why it is getting a really good score of 7.5. Remember, 7.5 is not a bad score. It's actually a really good score. By definition, look down at my scoring chart. 7.0 is the bottom threshold for really good. So this is 0.5 higher than really good. It was a really good song. I, I enjoyed it. Would I listen to this again? Yeah, actually I would. I might even go as far as to say I would, I would put this on, on a couple of playlists. I would definitely put this on driving to Vegas. Driving around town, probably too. Jim... I don't know. Uh, maybe I, I might. I might. You know what? I actually. You know what? I would put this on my gym playlist. I would. I would give it a trial run. I would give it a few weeks to see how it does. You know how it performs. You know when I'm in on a, on a treadmill. Definitely. I. I am always looking for treadmill music. That is where I need the music most. Is when I'm doing treadmill work. I hate the treadmill. Good lord. Um. But yeah, I, I would definitely, absolutely uh, put this, actually, now that I think about it, I would, I would put it on all three playlists, at least for a trial run and see how it goes. So yeah, 7.5, final score, I have spoken. Well, that's going to do it for this edition of Reactions, Reviews, and Rants. Hope you all enjoyed the show. Hopefully, I was able to entertain you. If I was able to put a smile on your face and brighten your day, then I did my job, and I'm so glad I could do it. If you didn't enjoy the show and you would like to see more videos like this, feel free to join the fan base by clicking on that button down there. Yeah, you know the button I'm talking about. Click on that button, join the fan base, and become one of us. Now, for whatever reason, if you don't feel like clicking on that button, that's okay. I still respect you. Also, if you didn't enjoy the video, please feel free to give the video a thumbs up. It will do me a world of good, and it will do you absolutely no harm whatsoever. Finally, if you guys do join the fan base, you will find a bell down there that you can click on. By clicking on that bell, it'll keep you up to date on everything happening with this channel, including when new content gets dropped. So, if you want to stay in the know, click on the bell, and you'll stay in the know. Well, that's going to do it for the night, folks. Until next time, this is David Heretic signing off, reminding you to stay fabulous and support each other. Later. Peace.